Good morning. This is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit. We're continuing our series of daily morning meditations where we generally look at one or another of the lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer, what is known as the daily office lectionary. And I thought today we would take a look at the lesson that's assigned for evening prayer from the book of the prophet Nehemiah. Now, we've been reading through Ezra and Nehemiah uh, because they give to us an account of the return of the people of Israel back from what is known as the Babylonian exile. Remember that the people of the Jews, because of their disobedience, that, that, which displeased God, uh, became dispersed. They were, they were defeated by the Babylonian kings and were sent into exile. And then as time went on, Artaxerxes, the king of Babylon, allowed for the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem, returned all the golden vessels, etc., etc. And so it is that Nehemiah and Ezra, Ezra the priest were there for the rebuilding and for the bringing back of the people of Israel into Jerusalem to begin once again the worship of the living God and the offering of the sacrifices in the temple. One of the things that happens when this happens is, is the regular reading of the law. And for those returning from the Babylonian exile, they certainly had an understanding of what it meant to be a Jew. But because it, you know, we didn't have printing presses, we didn't have readily available copies of the scriptures, many of the Jews had never in fact heard the fullness of the law being read from the books of Moses. And so today's account we get from Nehemiah deals exactly with that, where they are reading the law to the people. Now, interesting, this is one of those lessons where if you look at the text in the lectionary, we do some skipping around. We do one through three, and then five through six, and then nine through 12. And my first instinct when I'm reading it by myself is, of course, is to read all those verses in between. Uh, I'm not gonna do that reading it out loud to you, however, because you can certainly see why they're skipped. And what they are is a long list of names of people who were present. And boy, they are, tongue twisters, and, and in some ways not even relevant to the story. It helped to give the readers of that time period a sense of who was there and put things in context. But for those of us generations later, uh, it's not quite as important as the actual message itself. If you want to go through a long litany of names, uh, read chapter 7 in Nehemiah because it, it's a list of all the families that came back to Jerusalem. And boy, that's a, a list of tongue twister names for us in our modern day uh, English usage. So, chapter 8, beginning at verse number 1. And all the people gathered themselves together as one man unto the street that's, that was before the water gate, and they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded to Israel. And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, that they could hear with understanding and upon the first day of the seventh month. And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from morning until midday before the men and the women and those that could understand and the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. And Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood which they had made for this purpose and beside him stood Mathanias and Shema and Ananiah, and Uriah, and Hilkiah, and Manasseh in his right hand, and on his left hand, Pedawiah, and Meshiah, and Melchiah, and Hashem, and Hashbadana, and Zechariah, and Meshulam. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above the people. And when he opened it, the people stood up, and Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. And all the people answered, saying, Amen, Amen, with lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. And so they read the book of the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. And Nehemiah, which is the Tishbite, and Ezra the priest, and the scribe, and the Levite, and the people said unto the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not nor weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law of the law then said they unto them go your way eat the fat and drink the sweet and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared for this day is holy unto the lord neither be sorry for the joy of the lord is your strength so the levites stilled all the people saying hold your peace for the day is holy neither be ye grieved and all the people went their way to eat and to drink and to send portions and to make great mirth because they had understood the words that were declared unto them. 
So their first instinct is to weep because here's the word of the Lord which has been withheld from them. They don't know it and they realize the, that they're not really following it completely and wholly and the time will come for them to do that. But here we hear that we're told by Ezra, we're told by Nehemiah that the Levites, the priests, were told to tell people to rejoice. It's a holy day. The good news is that you've heard the law of the living God and we should celebrate. And not only celebrate ourselves, but share with those who have not prepared a meal, right? The celebration isn't a celebration unless others are included in it, even those who aren't uh, perhaps able to do so. So it is interesting to see how the word of the Lord, even if it seemed hid for a time for the people of the original covenant, certainly will come to full fruition. And we will see as time goes on that they'll be excited about the law and they'll be challenged by the law and then, of course, the time will come when they will fail. And we all do as human beings. Uh, and that's the up and the down of the people of the original covenant. Ultimately, of course, fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ, our Messiah and our Lord. Today is Tuesday. So we do have Holy Communion today at 12.15. Uh, and you're welcome to join us uh, via live stream or in person, even better. Uh, however, we will not have evening prayer tonight. We've got a conflict. So I hope that you will pray it uh, at your own home. Uh, and, and read today's lesson, which you've already heard, as well as the lesson from the Acts of the Apostles for evening prayer. And I do hope that you have a blessed Tuesday.